Hi again. Now that you've had the procedure done, let's go over some of the key things that you need to focus on after the procedure. As you saw, when you stood up and coughed, all was well. So let's just do a quick overview of that. So remember, this was what was happening before. We had you cough and you were leaking. Now we put the sling in and that's the Solix sling that we used by making a small incision in the vagina, attaching the sling to the inside muscles, having you stand up and cough, made sure that you did not leak and that was done. Remember, we knew that you were a dis success because we had you cough standing up with a full bladder and there was no leakage at all. So now what do you do after the procedure is done? You can go back to normal activity the next day. You know, if you have no pain, no discomfort, you should be able to go back. Expect some amount of vaginal bleeding. Now that's very variable, you know, from one person to the other. For some, it may be almost nothing. To someone else, it may be just like a light period. It should never be like a heavy period. So remember that. And you may have a little discharge for the next week or so. You may go back to walking. You know, patients always ask me, what type of activities can I do? You can walk right away. You can even go treadmill walking, a little speed walking, that's okay. Just do some gentle exercises for the first week. Avoid heavy lifting. By that means, anything less than 15 pounds is good. Avoid more than 15 pounds, at least for the first month. And avoid sexual activity because there is an incision in the vagina. It's a different reason because you do not want that incision to open up and then the sling gets exposed and he will have discomfort. So the goal is that what we did is we attached the sling to the muscle, right? So that's doing well. Now you have to keep the muscles strong because the sling is not going to come loose unless the muscles loosen. So your job is to keep it tight. And this is the pelvic floor muscle. So let me show you through this model. Remember the pelvic floor muscles are these muscles right here. And these are the muscles that you really, really need to engage. And one thing what I do is I will do an examination when you come in, make sure the incision is healed well. Then I'll put my one or two finger along the muscle and have you squeeze your muscles. And then that will help me gauge how strong your muscles are or how weak they are. Now let's see, my exam will assess your tone. So if the score is good and your muscle tone is good, that means great. Then I will encourage you to do this on your own. And what does that mean? You need to do eight second squeeze. So let's do it now. So you take a breath in, hold your breath and squeeze in tight. Squeeze, 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 relax. And that's what you need to do. Eight seconds of a hold and release and you do eight of these at a time that's about you're talking literally less than a minute and then you do about three to four times in a day all in all it just takes four minutes in the entire 24 hours there's not a lot of time commitment do this for the rest of your life this is really really important that once you know your muscle strength is good and i've determined this on my exam you must keep doing this that's really important associate this with a daily routine Something which could be very useless, like, you know, you're stopped at a traffic light or there are ads on TV. You know, mute the TV, focus on a pelvic floor and squeeze your muscles. Red light, there's nothing to do. Stop there and squeeze your muscles. So this is, <coughs> excuse me, very, very important process to perform. If on my exam, I find that the muscle score is very weak or you're pushing, then I will tell you, don't do it on your own. And then we may have to use the pelvic muscle stimulation machine to help improve the strength of the pelvic floor muscles. And that uses this particular machine. And here we can actually stimulate it. So this muscle is getting stimulated. It stops, we stimulate it. And that's how we make the muscle get stronger. This is done in the office. It's about done once a week for about four to six weeks. Its session lasts about 30 to 45 minutes. There's really no discomfort or pain and it helps mainly improving the weak pelvic muscles after the sling procedure. So remember, the tree trunks, the, the hammock is your sling. The tree trunks are your pelvic muscles. Now you can enjoy the water, the sound of running water and all that. You can jump up and down. You can do all that with the sling, which is good. But remember, you got to keep that muscle strong. If the muscle caves in, your sling is obviously going to loosen. So remember that. So the key thing is 
Now that the sling is in place, it will not loosen. It's your job now to just four minutes per day. That's all, four minutes per day. Focus on your muscles, strengthen them. You can do even longer, that's not a problem. But keep engaging your muscles, keep them strong. Avoid unnecessary heavy lifting if you can help it. Eventually you may lift, but gruntingly, ugh, like lifting like that, you should try to avoid as much as possible. Avoid getting constipation and straining at a bowel movement. If you do all those things correctly, there is no reason why your success should fail. So think about this. This is how the urethra was. The tissues had weakened and the urethra had fallen down. The muscles were weak. Now you make the muscles stronger. By making the muscles stronger, the sling has already lifted it in place, right? So you also, your muscles are weak, but now you've lifted the sling in place. You do the therapy, you not only have the sling holding the urethra up, but now you have this muscle that's also built up. As you can see, the water level has risen. So when the, if compared to this, I mean, if you look at this one, see this here, now it's all the urethra is counting on is the sling. You know, it's still floating in air. You want to make sure that your muscles come up and then the muscle and the sling would complement and hold the urethra in place. So that is what you need to do after the procedure. The other important thing that you must do is follow up. And this is really, really very important as to the follow up. So the DIST has had great success in our hands and we've had very good results, but our goal is to see what happens in the long term and that time will tell. So what we do is rather than bring you to the office, we have you fill up some online questionnaires. They're very simple, but very important. And you do that at three months, six months, 12 months, and then 24 months and yearly thereafter. Why do we do that? Because in our philosophy and just like in any clinical uh, research philosophy, it is no news is considered a good news. Good news. We say, nope, that's not true. No news at best may be no news, but what we consider is no news, that means bad news. That means if we don't hear from you, it could very well mean that you are not doing well. It may mean that you are doing okay, but we don't go by that fact. So we really, really want to hear from you. And we need to document this and know not only for ourselves, but also for you. So please contact us because we do not want this to be bad news. So just like what Tom Cruise says, this is what I would say, show me the evidence. And that's what you should be asking. Show me the evidence. What is your long-term data? So yeah, I can answer these questions. Doc, how long have you been doing this? I can tell you that. Doc, what is your success? I can tell you it's 98%. But when you ask me these questions, Doc, how long will my sling last? Doc, will I need the sling to be tweaked after a few years? or after I become menopausal, will the sling become loose? To answer these questions truthfully, I, mean, I can give you a hunch, but that's not what I should be doing. You want the facts. And for me to provide you with the facts, you need to provide me with the data. So just like how a patient like you would come in and ask me, what is my future like? If I have gathered this data from my previous patients and they have filled it out correctly, I would be able to answer that question correctly to you and say, hey, our patients filled out the questionnaires and this is what we know. How long will it last? I can tell you. Will it be tweaked or no? I will tell you that. And will menopause affect it? I can tell you that too. And this is not just based upon hunch. It's based upon true evidence. So yes, the DISC success that we have devised has a very great success in our hands. We do this in a very dynamic manner with the patient standing up. But once the sling is in place, you can't forget about it. You must keep your pelvic muscles engaged. You do not want to just hold the bladder for the whole day. You want to make sure you go to the bathroom every two to three hours to keep it empty. And please, please follow up with us and fill our questionnaires. There is absolutely no cost to you, but it is tremendous gain for patients like you, you know, future patients and present patients who would significantly benefit from that information. 
We will follow you up and make sure that you're reminded to fill the forms up. We will even provide you pre-stamped envelopes to mail it in or do it on the website. So please make sure that you fill the forms up completely and correctly when prompted so that we can keep answering those questions. What is going to be my long-term success? If you have any other issues with the bladder, since I will not be typically seeing you anymore, if you have any other questions about the bladder or any other pelvic organ issue, please get in touch with us. Thank you.